Hello guys and welcome, it's Newsy Newsison time where I want to touch on some really interesting things such as the version 38 update features, discovered by the legendary Lubos and Basti, some Cambria discoveries from the master of cutting edge, sadly it's Bradley, with game sales, new games and content coming up. So enough chinwagging, let's get started. So starting off with the awesome source, it's the version 38 update features. These features have been discovered by Lube. I'm just going to call him Lube because I don't know how to say, is it Luboss? And it's also fun. So Lube found some things along with Basti564 and I'll link Basti's GitHub repos down below in the description. It's full of amazing things like removing Facebook from the headset, reverting game builds and a launcher for hidden features. So the discoveries are access to things like Infinite Office. We saw an advert a long time ago for Infinite Office and we've not had the full package that was promised to us. But the demo video shows three screens working as a computer, so I'm hoping for some usability improvements in that space. There's also something called App Previews, which is a work in progress feature, so it may not be something coming in the next update, but maybe the one after or the one after that, or not at all. And this screenshot makes me think, what are we getting? Is this going to be VR snippet images or trailers for us to feel what the game could be like? I sure hope so, because I just do not understand why we still don't have that. After all of these years, we still don't have VR trailers. Flat screen does not do VR justice. There's also space sense sensitivity adjustments, which my goodness, I would love. I personally cannot stand space sense. It's so distracting having pink lines flickering in and out of my view mid game. So being able to reduce that and turn that down, I'm all for it. But at the same time, please bring back guardian sensitivity for the stationary guardian because pass through only just seems silly and potentially dangerous, especially when that sensitivity was a feature that already existed. There was also mention of a pass through opacity slider. So how much you want to blend the virtual world and the real world. This is something we also saw in the infinite office adverts and I can't believe this isn't a feature yet. So I definitely believe this is coming 100%, although at the end, well, not 100. There was something at the end of the video that said that version 38 might be skipped by Oculus. But Oculus haven't told me anything of the sort. They did tell me version 38 was releasing on the 14th of February to the public testing channel. So some of you may have it already. So please comment down below if you already have the version 38 update, because we are still waiting for the release notes to drop to see what this actually contains within it. Because I know some really cool features are coming in 39, I can't say what they are, but I don't know what's coming in 38. And since we're on the topic of the quest anyway, the next piece of information is discovered by, sadly, it's Bradley, Bradley Lynch. And it is speculation, but it seems totally plausible. It's the Cambria headset from Oculus to contain haptic feedback inside the headset. So this was a theory based on a leak that showed a configuration file that contained a haptic booster under the C cliff codename. Bradley also said he had friends in Asia that have already seen some pre-production headsets, the Cambria headsets, and they said that it actually contains haptics already in these pre-prod devices. And there's a few more reasons as to why I believe this to be true, because the PlayStation VR headset is expected to have haptics inside it. It's confirmed. And that's going to be released around the time we expect to see the Cambria. Valve's next headset is also expected to have haptics in it as well. And a study recently was released showing that head vibrations can reduce motion sickness. So if the Cambria is expected to be a business device, it's going to have many people who have not tried VR before and will not have their VR legs, or they won't be used to the interfaces. So having the ability to assist someone and prompt them with feedback or haptic feedback or reduce motion sickness would be desired. It just sounds like something they would implement. So and since we briefly just mentioned Valve, I may as well move on to this story. The Steam Deck, Valve's portable handheld console running the Steam OS, had some people excited to see if they can play VR on this device because it has the ports available to use the Oculus Link cable or a wireless connection via AirLink or virtual desktop. And Bradley, again, this guy, he's always looking, he's always researching, and I know he has trouble with it, which is great for us, but I do feel for him. So I'm sending my love to you, Bradley, if you see this, or if you know him, send my love to him. He had noticed that games are now being tagged on Steam as unsupported in regard to the Steam Deck. If it's a VR-only title, then it's gonna say unsupported. But we're still gonna have to try, I'm still gonna plug my headset into that damn device and try and get something working because as someone kindly mentioned unsupported doesn't mean it won't work this next story i was under nda 
And since Upload have already spoken about it, I'm going to do so as well because it's not fair. After the Fall is getting a huge update, a season full of content that may give you an excuse to dive back in again and play After the Fall. It's going to have a new game mode, it's going to have new maps, new weapons and even new enemies. So I'm sure many of you are sick and tired of harvesting the same maps a gazillion times by now. So they're going to have two weapons, one is known and one is unknown. So one that is known is going to be the revolver, which is a super powerful weapon. It's like BAM! And the reloading is really fun as well, but it only has a handful of bullets. There'll also be a horde mode, which goes on for as long as you can last. There's going to be four friends with floppies and unlocks available and harvest available as well. So you don't just have to go on the harvest. You can hang out and play in the horde mode and still get the benefits. A new map will be Hollywood Boulevard for a harvest run, stockpile for PvP matches and junction and highway for the horde modes. I do have some exclusive gameplay coming, a nice look into this. So please stick around if you want to see it in action. So it was Valentine's Day and we... So we have a Valentine's Day sale. I just combined them on the Oculus Store until the 21st at midnight, which is around 8 a.m. on the 22nd if you're in the UK. So I want to recommend some games that I absolutely adore that are on here that you can grab at a bargain, such as Lies Beneath, an action horror title with a stunning cell shaded art style. If you like Resident Evil, you're going to love this game. It's full of action and it's full of scary moments. Phantom Covert Ops is like Splinter Cell, but instead you're stuck in a canoe and you can play sitting down, which is always a bonus. I love just kind of rowing down a canal and then sniping someone. It just, it feels really good. There's also Until You Fall, one of the best games you can play in virtual reality. It's one of my favorite titles. It has a beautiful color palette. I definitely recommend that. And it's got a big update coming soon as well. So I hope you enjoy the season of love and ask VR to be your Valentine. Is that reaching? Next is Unbinary, a new game coming soon to the Quest platform. And Unbinary could mean zero or five volts. What is it? What are you? I'm neither. And fun fact, the on and off switch on some devices is actually binary. It's zero and one for on and off. And it took me so long as a kid to kind of figure that out. I knew like which one was on and which one was off, but I didn't know what the symbols actually meant. And I found that, I found that interesting. And if just one person now knows that, this was all worth it. So anyway, Binary is releasing on the 17th of February. It has a fun art style. It kind of looks painted. I love interesting new worlds, new stylized environments in virtual reality, rather than the realistic visuals, at least on the Quest platform, because the headset just can't, it can't handle intense, stunning, realistic visuals, unless it's doing photogrammetry. The game, it is a puzzler and you're going to try and fix Webby's issues, which is the name of the AI in the game. And based on the trailer, as I've not played the early access Steam version of it, which you can enjoy right now if you want to, but it seems super slow paced and trippy. Also the narrator, I can't. Maybe it's because I'm British, but it just feels like my mum is shouting at me. It's not my fault, okay? It looks really cool. It's really stylized, so I'm still going to try it. And finally, I've got to end it on this story. This story is hilarious and tragic. Did you know you must be careful when playing VR? Because you may get Gorilla Arm. Ergonomic experts have dubbed repetitive strain injury playing VR as Gorilla Arm because it makes you strain your shoulders, holding your arms out. When extending your arms, it's eventually going to ache here. And eventually they're going to be like this. I personally am no expert in this space, but I smell something. Is this something any of you have experienced? There must be a reason why this has popped up. The article did give me something amazing though. There's a subreddit called VR to ER, and I'll link it down below. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but enjoy. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Please subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I will see you next time because I have some amazing games and tidbits waiting, and I can't wait to share it with you. So I hope you have a great week. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.